Over the years, Aquibum State, through successive governments, has invested in aviation with a tripod investment in Abom Air, a world-class African regional airline. The maintenance, repair and overhaul facility, which is the first of its kind in West Africa, and the Smat Victor Attar International Airport Terminal, which is set to be an aviation game-changer in Nigeria. The new terminal, um, it brings a huge game-changing uh, reality to the industry in uh, Nigeria. Uh, first of all, it is the first purpose-built hub terminal. It's specifically designed to move passengers from flight to flight. So you can arrive on a domestic flight and connect to an international flight. Arrive from an international flight and connect to a domestic flight. Arrive on an international flight and connect to an international flight. Right in the same terminal, under the same airport experience, which is world class. And it all adds to the joy of traveling that uh, we had kind of lost in, uh, in Nigeria because of the very, very poor airport experience that our Nigerian passengers and visitors to Nigeria have experienced through the other international airports over time. With this terminal, uh, you want to go to Johannesburg, you book a flight like a domestic flight out of Abuja, you fly into Uyo to connect to Johannesburg. The wow airport experience you will get will make you never want to go and fly out of any inconvenient airport anymore. So the, the effect of a, a beautiful transit point in Uyo, a very, very nice and globally competitive flight to wherever you're going. We're going to have a very controlled environment. That's what we want to present to, to, to airport users. We're going to collaborate with all the security services and any other person who has anything to do with processing of passengers to make the experience going through Uyo Airport a world-class experience like you find anywhere else you go to. And so by providing this service through this game-changing terminal, we expect to build this hub into a, a hub in West Africa that really has never been seen before because um, despite the fact that Lome is a very small city in Togo, situating an airline there and, and working on a strategy similar to this, ASKY has been able to develop Lome into a huge hub Last year, they did about 1.2 1. million passengers, of which less than 5% were originating or terminating in Lomé. They were all transfer passengers. And guess what? The vast majority of those are Nigerians who have to go through out of Nigeria to Lomé to go and connect to other places. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. We're trying to yank the airport experience and the flying experience of passengers in Nigeria out of the old stone age into the modern age. That's what we want to do with this term. Ibome's strategy from the very beginning was hinged on being a, an airline that's resourced like any other competitive airline. You want to go and compete in a very, very brutal environment with airlines that have MROs, that have hub terminals. So that's what you do. And that's the kind of story we're doing right here in New York. Uh, our, our strategy to be able to build the world-class African regional airline that's our vision is to be able to, to provide a world-class service. And to provide a world-class service, everything comes into play. The airport experience of the passengers, the onboard experience of the passengers, the customer service element through the buying of the ticket, through the check-in, through the arrival, through the delivery of bags on the belt. We want to control that, the, all those inputs to make sure working with our partners, IADC, the uh, Ibom Airport Development Company Limited that owns the airport, that will work in tandem to build you into a, a very competitive hub in Africa. And that's, that's the whole idea of this terminal and this MRO, is to build a strong airline, just like everybody else. They just plan and they focus on their discipline. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Think carefully, plan, develop a business plan, execute it to the limit and we believe that if we do that in a very disciplined manner in, 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 uh, under very strong corporate governance rules uh, which we have practiced from the beginning there's no reason why we won't be a successful and competitive international uh, standard african regional airline and that's the whole point of this <music>
major MRO facility, like you find uh, anywhere in the advanced world. It's one of only four in Africa, which is uh, the MRO of South African Airways in Johannesburg, the MRO of Ethiopian Airlines in Addis Ababa, the facility of Egypt Air in Cairo, and this one in Rio, which now obviously becomes the MRO for Egypt Air. And um, it's massive, it can take two Boeing 747 800 standing side by side with the doors closed and climate control. In the same way, uh, our aircraft type, uh, the Airbus A220, it can take eight of them at once. And our other aircraft type, the uh, CRJ900, it can take 10 of them at once. So the facility is really, really large. And it's what uh, very big airlines have. Uh, depending on what aircraft you're maintaining, it, you, you could be doing, uh, for instance, if we're just doing line maintenance of our fleet of A220s, you can have eight of them at once uh, under maintenance. And that's huge capacity. And that goes for all aircrafts in the range of uh, the Airbus A320 and the Boeing 737 series. So you can take all of those. The MRO facility is very, very important for not just for for Ibom Air or for Ibom, but for Nigeria. It's the only facility of its type in the whole of Western Central Africa. But more than that, it presents an opportunity for us to pivot into uh, a different era in, in the industry in Nigeria because of all the, the facilities that it has, from wheels and aircraft brakes and tire and uh, all the different uh, avionics shops. Uh, many of these things haven't existed in Nigeria at this scale before. So we have the opportunity to provide all of these maintenance, repair and overhaul services to all the airlines in Western Central Africa. So we intend to create a center of excellence with this, with this facility that will allow us to, uh, to provide the services that our airlines have to fly across the world to go and get. They either go to Ethiopia or they go to, to Johannesburg or worse still, they go to Europe and pay a hell of a lot of euros to be able to maintain the aeroplanes. With this facility, we're now going to be able to provide commercial maintenance for other airlines right here in New York. We are partnering with Airbus Consulting. Uh, we have contracted them to partner with us to come and assess the facility, which, by the way, uh, they, are, they are very impressed with to help us develop a business plan for optimal use of this facility. So what we want to do is be able to maintain our fleet, which is the A220 and the uh, CRJ900, and also to advise us on which fleet best we can get the most business out of. And so we can set up, when we have that business plan, it allows us to know what to invest in, in terms of the capabilities of maintenance of which aircraft and to target the right airlines to go after to provide the, uh, to offer our services to them uh, going forward. We have to give it to uh, Aquaibo, uh, a succession of progressive governors have had, had and continue to execute this vision. So you have uh, an airport built by the state government, a world-class MRO built by the state government, a world-class terminal, the best terminal in the country, and in my view, because I know about all the, basically all the infrastructure in the region, the best in Western Central Africa, uh, properly built airport, properly designed for purpose, fit to purpose, or fit for purpose. Uh, all of these come together to form a serious tripod Airport MRO airline. What that means is we're creating a world-class aviation ecosystem in Europe for the benefit of Aquaibo and for the country. Of course, um, it offers, particularly Aquaibo mites, so many options for the for their future. The young people they can be pilots, they can be engineers, they can be cabin crew, they can be airline customer service agents, managers, and. Uh, it doesn't also preclude the rest of Nigeria and, and the world because, you know, the skills are, are found everywhere. Um, and so uh, what we're trying to do is to create an ecosystem that works in a world-class manner and that 
will help the rest of us in the country to see what aviation uh, can do when you're not bothered about me, 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 and what am I going to get out of it, and what am I going to get out of it, but you're doing something for legacy reasons, to, to be able to show that it can be done, and that all the other people who have done it before, they didn't, it didn't just fall from heaven. It, it came from a long-term vision, long-term discipline, focus, and, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to prove that it's possible to do this. And so, uh, huge kudos to the government and people of Akwaibu State. Huge kudos to the, the, the people of uh, Ibom Airport Development Company Limited and Ibom Air. And uh, we believe that, that the efforts we are putting, the focus we are putting, the discipline we're going to the table will, de will deliver on these investments by the government and people of Akwaibu to the benefit of Akwaibu and the country.